Our first caller is Phoebe from France. Hi, Phoebe. How can we help you? Hello. Hello. First of all, thank you so much um, for answering my question. Um, so uh, for all the years I've been lifting, every session has revolved around compound exercises as my main uh, muscle and strength uh, builders. Unfortunately, I got a diagnosis a few weeks ago, which will mean I need to modify aspects of my training for the foreseeable future. Um, I would now need to utilize more isolation exercises as I now have a kind of balance between risk and reward uh, with com compound exercises being more biased towards risk uh, with higher loads and the lower the reps. Um, so how does someone like me program the use of more isolation exercises and still gain the same amount of strength and muscle? Okay, so uh, very good question. Um, I would like to get a little bit more information yeah, if that's why? okay. So is it the load that's the problem or is it the intensity that's it's the issue? It's the load. It's the load at the moment. Um, what I have is quite rare, so there isn't a lot of um there isn't a lot of information around it but it seems to be i can still go to a point of failure um but the higher the load and the lower the reps uh, things seem to be a bit more difficult got it okay oh well so there's lots of different ways to increase intensity and tension one of them is with load obviously that's being taken off the table for you mm -hmm. uh you could slow your reps down you could do isometric Isometrics. training, which is very, very valuable. Um, you could do higher reps. Studies actually show higher reps uh, performed at high intensity um, can be almost uh, as effective as low reps. So just do those things, and I think you'll be okay. As far as isolation versus compound, you'll probably have to do a little bit more volume, uh, okay. but, but feel it out. And then here's something that might make you feel better. What you do to build muscle, oftentimes you can maintain it with much less work, uh, load and intensity. So in other words, if you built, you know, 10 pounds of muscle doing heavy deadlifts and squats and presses and whatever, and, and you've kept that 10 pounds for a while, maintaining it, you could, it's a lot easier to maintain it. You don't have to do quite as much volume, intensity and load to maintain, uh, than you did when you were building. I would definitely tempo is where I would go here, right? So I would just slow down the tempo. And I mean, I'm watching Doug right now training, and he's following. Uh, we have this a new program that we're working on, and he's following some of the protocol. And you know, the the tempo is a four two two in there. And I know you. I think your experience right now with it's been you've never experienced this, right? No, I have had to reduce my weight dramatically. Yeah. So which in this case, this is a perfect example of like you know because you can't do heavy load. And there's nothing that said, even though the research points to like the, you know, like four, two, two, right? So four seconds on the negative, two on the isometric, and then and then two seconds on the uh, concentric, uh, doesn't mean you can't do six, two, two. Doesn't mean you can't do eight with a, a pause for four seconds. I mean, you can really manipulate and play with tempo a lot, and it will make it feel like yeah. it is heavy as shit, and it doesn't have to be that heavy. Yeah, and just increasing your tension while going through that lift, too, just intrinsically, like just squeezing harder as you're doing these reps as well even makes a difference. There's there's just a, a multitude of ways to add progressive uh, uh, overload. overload. Yeah, Thank you know, you. Phoebe, one there was a, one time I was I had only had access to a gym where the dumbbells went up to 30 pounds, and so for me, for a lot of exercises – that's too light. So what I did was exactly what we're telling you is I went really slow. I focused hard on the squeeze. I did lots of pauses, lots of isometrics, lots of slow repetitions. And to my surprise, I actually, my body improved. I actually got good results from it so much so that it became something that I injected into my, my regular routine. Okay. Okay. That's great. Um, what about the strength side of it? Cause if that's, um, muscle building and stuff like that yep. does strength have to be in the low rep range can you still no. use the same you're gonna you're gonna build strength doing strength. that also yeah you'll build strength doing that also but you know here's the thing you have to understand is that strength is also a skill so if you're not practicing something specific often will you lose quote unquote strength in that particular thing probably so in other words uh if you are really strong at you know two reps with a squat and then you go and perform, you know, 30 reps with a squat, like general strength, you'll probably be okay. But yeah, you're going to lose some strength in the thing that you're not practicing very often. And that's a lot of that has to do with the skill mm. of the lift. But as far as how you look, how you feel, 
If anything, you're probably going to notice some benefit from this change. What I really like with uh, isometrics is is the way that you can actually apply a lot of max intensity. So you can do that in a safe manner where you know you, you, you can also structure so you don't do quite as many reps. So you can sort of emulate uh, what you would be doing with compound lists, but now you're you're you know you're you're squeezing your entire body and and, and you know ramping it up as as, as high as you can go uh, intensity wise, but then you can also back off at any time. Okay, that's great. All that's right. great. Awesome. All right, thanks, Phoebe. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, well, it's cool. Someone calling from France. That's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. that all the way over there. But yeah, you know, um, we, we tend to get caught up. I was really curious to why or what. I, I, it, it, she it yeah, didn't it sound like, clear, I yeah. don't want to pry. I, I know, I felt yeah. the same Gave way too. An opportunity I was hoping you more. would, but you didn't. So I, I, I really wanted to know what, what it was. Because sometimes too, you know, sometimes that the doctors go this route because they just out of, Sa for safety, right? They don't want to be sued, right? And so they don't know a lot about what's going on. So it's, it's all like, liability. Yeah, it's like uh, would n you cannot ever lift heavy again. It's too risky, yeah. you know. And it's like, man, I would like to know a little That's more. That's why what's I said going. intensity versus load, because often it's intensity that the doctor says, you know, because I I could go look. I'll tell you what, <laughs> like, yes, I could. Let's say I could squat four hundred pounds for one rep. That's uh, a, a lot of load and intensity. Or let's say I squatted 250 pounds for 30 reps. The intensity is probably higher on that 30 rep well, or, set of squats. Or this, or take right. that 200 pounds and do just four reps still. But, Super slow. But do them slow. Do right. a, you know, a five, six and second that's negative. I mean. And I'll tell you what, it'll feel yeah, it like it's grueling. It'll feel like it's 400 and pounds. And that's what I mean. If it's intensity you got to be careful for, then, then it doesn't matter. Load, you know, it's how intense the set is. But she said specifically load. So I'm assuming it has something to do with her connective tissue and her mm -hmm. joints, something mm -hmm. that's causing issues Some with sort her of instability. Yeah, you know, that's somewhere. what I'm assuming. Yeah. 